Ready to market to real estate agents but struggling to find leads? What if I told you there's a way to get all active agents in a region within minutes? That's right. By targeting real estate agents, you unlock a gold mine of opportunity. Whether you are selling a real estate product or looking to build a partnership, agents can be crucial to your business. In this video, we'll cover how to download all agents for a region instantly. This will include contact information like phone number and email so you can get straight to marketing. In this video, we're going to cover how to get real estate agent leads from realtor.com using an API where we can look at all the information for a given agent, bring this into an automated format to view all of them for a given region, and then have it in a spreadsheet so we can contact agents via email, phone number, address, as well as socials. So right now I'm on Google Collab. Google Collab is a notebook environment that is free to use to code in Python without needing to have any programming languages installed on your machine. I'm going to walk through a simple example of how to utilize this API so that we can get information from this web page. So why are agents valuable leads for real estate products? I get a lot of questions from folks who are either trying to sell some sort of real estate product or they may be looking to get into the real estate game and they want to gain experience. By working with agents, you are finding already trusted individuals within the space that can provide a lot of insight to help market your product. So whether you're a mortgage lender, home improvement company, or if you're a student looking to break into the real estate industry, my main piece of advice is to try to work with other agents for free by helping them with data tasks or other simple tasks that they need resources for to help build your network and your experience. So traditionally, in order to get all these agents into a spreadsheet, we would need to probably hire a virtual assistant to copy each name one by one. And this is even a step more complicated because for each of these profiles, we have to click within the profile. And then from in here, we can get more information on the website, contact details, all area served, listings, and more. So rather than spending hours manually doing this process, we could use web scraping in order to automatically pull information like this text that I just highlighted into a spreadsheet. The best part is that there are a ton of web scrapers out there that have already done all of the programming work behind it. So all we have to do is use their API. So in this example, I'm on Rapid API, which is a marketplace for other APIs. And I'm going towards the US real estate listings, which is pulling data from Realtor. I'm on the folder agent, or what we call an endpoint. And I'm looking at agent find, how to find these agents, basically how to tap into the API that is scraping this page. So for parameters, I need to enter a zip code. As we see on the Realtor page, we can actually search by city. However, because some cities, counties, et cetera, can have too many agents, to simplify it, the API has it by zip code. So I'm going to show you how to work through this in Python. If you just want to straight get the leads from me directly, you can skip to the end of this video. So here we're going to import our packages that we're going to use. And I'll get to what these functions are in a moment, but I'm just going to run these as well. And I'm going to enter in my Rapid API key. So in order for Rapid API to identify who you are, you need to sign up for free. You could use up to 100 credits for this API for free per month. And then once you have your API key, you'll see it show up here as well as your profile, and I'll give you access to be able to use this API. All right, I just entered in my API key, and now I can make a request. So going over to Rapid API, I can go to Python, since that's my primary language, and I usually use the package requests. So here's an example of the URL. So this is the endpoint agent find, which we saw down here. And this is the query string. So in this case, let's say I want to look at 07726, which is a zip code within New Jersey. That has now reflected in my query string. Then we have the limit of how many records or agents will be returned, which in this case, the max is 20. And we want to look at buyer agents. So we can copy this and paste this here, which I've already done click run, and it's going to retrieve for that first page, the top 20 agents, which I actually changed the zip code to 33610. That's one in Tampa. And if we press play here, we could see the number of results. Total result count is 675. 
Now, if you feel like I'm moving through this pretty fast, it's because I have a ton of videos on how to use Python as well as courses. I highly encourage you to check that out if you're new to Python. But now let's try to explore a little bit more about this response that we're getting from the API. So if we look at the number of keys in our JSON object, there are two in total, total result count and agents. How many agents do we have? 20 agents, which is to be expected since our limit here is 20. We can only gather 20 agents at a time. When looking at new data sets, I like to look at at least one object and try to understand it better. So if we look at agents and just look at the first object, which is zero, we can then view all of the keys related. So we have information like address, social media, nickname, full name, video, etc. Then we can view what this response is. Instead of just the keys, we're now looking at everything. We could see that there's a description for the agents that they can fill out. This agent in particular, Christina, has 29 years of experience, top 1% nationwide in sales out of 1.3 million realtors. Super impressive. But we want to be able just to extract a few parts of all this data, just ones that matter to us, like contact information. So what we could do here is actually write this to a file so we can more easily view it. And once you run, you'll see the file pop up right here, sampleagents.json. Now I'm using Firefox. Firefox is pretty awesome because you can open up the file within here, the JSON object, and it reads it really nicely while also having the ability to toggle and search on the JSON object. So one of the first things that we're going to want for a lead is their name. We can't just reach out to them and say, hey, agent, I'd love to offer my services for free to help you out so I can learn more about real estate. No, You've got to have their name so that we can make it more personalized. So if we search in here, name, we could see that there are a couple fields. We have name, which is the full name of this person. Then we have full name as well without that president added, first name and last name. So if we want to pull this element out, first name, we can look at the first object as we did and then take the key, first name. So if I run this, we now see Christina. That's the object that we want. But we want this not just for one single agent, we want it for many. So all the 20 agents that we retrieve data for. So here I'm going to loop through all of the agents, which just for this test, I'm going to look at just the first object. And I want to get this to a dictionary where we have first name and we're pulling that first name value. And we're going to view this in a table. So here we could see we have now a tabular view or a data frame that says first name, Christina. Now let's do this across all of the agents. So I'm going to remove this constraint, run it across all of the agents. And oh no, we are met with an error. It says first name. There's no such key as first name here. We can see that for one of the rows where we retrieve information for agents, there is no first name. So let's try to search here and see if there's another name we can look for. I'll just quickly viewing this, and you could see how this is a lot more messy than looking at it in Firefox but we could see there is a field called name, Tyler Carpenter. So let's search name. So we could see that we are able to get the name. It is a different field. So how are we going to handle this? Well, for one, this looks a little bit unclean. So what we want to do is replace. So remove that comma space and we'll replace that with nothing. Then we want to separate Tyler and Carpenter to get first name. So let's do split and we'll split by the space. Then we want to get the first object, and that will be Tyler. So we can add a condition up top, and we could say, if first name is in X, then the first name should be this value here. And actually, instead of X, it's going to be the keys. So we want to make sure that first name exists in those keys. And if not, then first name will be this value. And we'll reassign the variables. Now we have two options of how first name could be assigned. And we will put this here. This code needs to be within our loop and it doesn't get defined till later. So we'll copy this and we will paste it within our for loop. Make sure it's indented. We create a new list, agent list. We go through all of our agents. We are now creating a variable called first name. If first name already exists, then assign it to first name. If first name does not exist as a key, then try to 
get it from name and then do some cleaning. So let's run this. I'm going to run the data frame below. We now have all of the first names. Now there's more cleaning we can do, like making sure they're all in the same format. Here, Christina is all capitalized. We can go to first name and put in capitalized. So it's only capitalized in the first letter. And now we could see that that's normalized. So this is how you work with data. Data is usually never clean unless you're paying an arm and a leg for an API. I've already done all of the hard work of cleaning this information, of getting first name, last name, the mobile number, and a valid address. By running this cell, we are now getting more fields than just first name. We're getting agent-related info, listings info, as well as relevant links. And if we run this data frame here, we could see all 20 of the agents within one single table. So we have 20 agents, and then we have 18 columns. So if we go through one of these, we could see Christina Barone, email, phone number, address, NRDS ID, what office they are from, if they have a photo or not, review count, recommendations, number of active listings. We also get information on the realtor URL as well as their personal URL if they have their own branding or own website. Where do you take this from here? I just showed you how to take real estate agents from a web page using an API, be able to clean the data, and then put it into a data frame that you could just download easily and start marketing to. Now, as we see here, there are 20 records that we've returned, but there's a lot more agents than just 20, especially in this area that I pulled from, which is the Tampa area. So what you'll want to do is a for loop so that you could loop through each of these and then have a consolidated spreadsheet of all of the listings. So I'll show you quickly of how I've done that. I have this useful Streamlit app where I've already done all that backend work of cleaning the data as well as finding the main zip code for a county. I just selected New Jersey, Monmouth County. And for each county, I sync it back to zip codes and I find what's the zip code with the highest population. Because realistically, I don't wanna enter every single zip code that's in Monmouth County to find agents. There will be a ton of overlap because most agents are directed not by zip code, but by counties or sometimes even larger territories. If you could just find the most populous, you're going to find all of the relevant agents. From there, I automatically am able to have on the back end querying. So I already have this latest data run. I'm going to run it just to show you what this looks like. I can quickly see all the data that was pulled. There's 124 agents in total, which is a lot less than this 1,000 because I'm looking at active agents, not just any agent. Then I have all of the same relevant fields that we saw in Google Collab. I can see quick ratios of how many of these agents actually have active listings. Some of these that may have been pulled may have had an active listing a couple of months ago, so that's why they still fell into this list and could still be useful to target. How many were we able to retrieve a phone number as well as an email for? And then here I could download it as well. Once I have it download, I could then view it in a spreadsheet and decide if I want to upload it to my CRM for marketing or contact people individually. I just gave you a walkthrough of how you could utilize an API in order to extract information on agents. Reasons why you would want to reach out to agents could be that you're marketing a product, you're looking for a partnership, or maybe you're brand new to the real estate space and you want to provide some free work so that you could build your network and experience. I've given you the tools to do this on your own, but if you want it done already for you, you can reach out to me at Ariel Herrera, analyticsariel.com. Please put in the subject line that you want to buy agent leads for what county you want them for. Based upon how many records there are would be how much the cost is. And you could view that sample output as well. Let me know below what types of leads you want to see next.